Hello everyone. Today we are starting the lecture number 19, that is for post graduation program in export import management. Today's lecture is all about the import export custom clearance process. As we know, whenever we are doing any export and import, there will be a requirement of the custom clearance. Without the custom clearance, we are not be able to export either export or import. So that is the that is the thing. We are today we are going to understand what is the role and what is the significance of the custom clearance. What is all about the custom clearance? Every exporter is required to obtain the custom clearance in respect of export goods before they are shipped, sent to buyer, irrespective of the mode of mode of shipment. Whatever the whatever the modes of transport you are following, but what actually you have to do before sending the final goods to the importer, we have to be send the goods to the custom clearance. Once the custom clearance will be there, then only you will be able to send the goods to the final customer. Or final that is called importer. So every exporter in India, or not even the Indian across the globe, they require the custom clearance. So every exporter is required to obtain the custom clearance in respect of the export goods before they are sent to the buyer, irrespective of the modes of transport. Whether you are following the air mode, or or sea mode, or ICD that is called inland container depot, or road or railway. So whatever the mode of transport you are following, but what what actually we have to do, we have to be send our goods to the custom department for the custom clearance because custom clearance is a very important and without the custom clearance, we cannot send a good to the any country. The the mode of shipment could be either by sea, air, rail, or road or ICD. That is called internal container depot. According to the section forty of the custom act. Person in charge of the convenience conveyance vessels, aircraft, or the vehicle cannot permit loading of goods without permission of the custom authority. Got it? So all those person who are person in charge of the convenience vessels, whether it's a aircraft or vehicle, cannot permit the loading of the goods. You cannot load the goods on the particular vehicle without permission of the custom authority. So what actually we have to do? We have to take the prior permission of the custom clearance. After that, you can load the certain goods and services on the certain vehicles. The exporter through the clearing and forwarding agent, also known as the custom house agent, that is called CHA. The exporter through the clearing and forwarding agent, also known as the custom house agent, normally obtain the custom clearance. Numerous numerous number of times we have seen in the past, the exporter sent the goods to the custom and custom custom did not give the clearance. So, at the end of the day, they were they were not able to export those goods to the importer. That is a thing. Customer, that that is a thing. Customs plays a very vital role while while talking about the export and import business. Exchange control declaration form. Under the Custom Act, every export every exporter is required to declare the every exporter is required to declare export value of shipment and given undertaking that the export proceed would be realized within a period of 6 months from the date of shipment or due date whichever is earlier so under the custom act so what actually we have to do every exporter is required to declare the export value of the ship whatever the uh, whatever the uh, whatever the goods you are sending we have to be declare the value of the particular shipment and we have to be given undertaking to the export for the proceeding of the export and it, then it would be realized Within the period of the six month from the date of the shipment or due date, whichever is earlier. So within the six month, we have to be provide the certain declaration to the custom department that whatever the goods are we are sending, whatever goods we are exporting to the um, respective country, that is all about the, this total amount. The custom clearance, if the custom clearance for the shipment is made manually, the custom clearance for the shipment is made manually. Declaration is made in the GR form. Okay. If custom clearance is uh, clearance for the shipment is made manually, then declaration is made in the GR form in duplicate. Got it? Any doubt? Okay, so if custom clearance for the shipment is made manually, 
declaration is made in the GR form. GR is stand for guarantors, guarantor remittance, remittance, guaranteed remittance. Please note down this in duplicate. If the clearance is computerized, SGF form in duplicate is used in the place of GR form. Clear? So if custom is if custom is computerized, if, if the clearance is computerized, then SDR form be in duplicate used in place of GR form. Clear? So what is uh, SDR form? Statutory declaration form. Statutory declaration form. In case of the manual, you can use the GR form, but in case of the computerized, those then what we actually what actually we have to do, we have to be submit the SDF form. That is all about the statutory declaration form. Now, import clearance procedures. Categories of the import goods. Categories of the import freely importable items, canalized import, restricted or license import, or prohibited items. So we have the four categories of the import. Freely import, importable item is all about, as the name suggests that items under this category are free to import and don't require any license. Just like a, just like a FMCG goods or perishable items where the, there is no license required in, in terms of vegetable, in terms of fruits, where the, there is no license required, that is called freely importable item. Easily you can import from one place to other place. Okay, so as the name suggests, the items under this category are free to be import, imported and don't require any license. Restricted, just like emissions. Items under this category are restricted and require license for import, importation. So without requiring any license, without requiring any license, you cannot import those goods. That is called restricted or license. So we have numerous number of goods and services in India or even across the globe where the license is required. Or they are just, just like a pan masala that is called restricted. So if we are if we are importing those goods and services, then we are requiring the license. Canalize import items under this category can be imported only through specific channels or government agencies. I've been told the canalization also in a lecture number three or four. So item under this category, all those items which are falling under the category of canalized export, what will happen? <laughs> so item under this category can be imported only through specific channels or government agencies. <coughs> Got it? The, without the using the specific channel or government agency, we will not be able to we will not be able to import those goods and services. <coughs> Next, the prohibited items. As the name suggests, that items under this category are not permitted to be imported at all. Sometimes, that just like a liquor is banned in Saudi Arabia, yeah, a pan masala is banned in certain countries where the items are prohibited. So as the name suggests, items under this category are not permitted to be imported at all. Apart from any lessons, apart from any rules and regulation, you cannot be import those goods and services where the prohibited items is there. So list of the items under the category are published in the foreign trade policy that is called FT, FTP. Importer exporter must have IEC number that is called importer exporter code issued by the DGFP Director General of Foreign Trade Government of India. Then only we will be able to import of those goods and services. Then is the import clearance procedures. Upon cargo arrival, the importer has two options to clear immediately or to store under the bond and clear later. So when the cargo will be arrival by the air or sea or by road or railway, then we have the two options. Sometimes what we can do, we can we can ask for the immediately clearance or directly the goods sent, goods sent to the warehouses or uh, distribution house. But sometimes what we can do the, to store under the bond and clear later on stage whenever you are suitable. So bonded warehousing and clearance for the home consumption. Cargo is put in the bonded warehouse and clearance later upon a payment of the applicable duty. So whatever the duties and whatever the uh, whatever the taxes we have to be paid, once those uh, tax and duty will be paid, then only there will be a clearance. Bonded warehouse storage charges will be applicable during the period of the store. Yes, wherever, whenever we are keeping the goods and services on the bonded warehouses, we have to be pay certain charges also. 
without without clearance of those charges you cannot uh, take those goods from that bonded warehouses to your your place so that is the thing ki you have to be pay certain certain charges depending on the periods you are keeping for you are keeping for one month or keeping for 15 days or 10 days or 5 days accordingly you have to be pay it's totally on the pro rata basis clearance for the home consumption cargo is cleared for the delivery upon payment of the applicable duty imported take away is cargo and no storage charge is applicable if done if done so during the period free periods so sometimes what happen cargo is cleared for the delivery upon payment when as soon as you are making the payment your cargo will be clearance as depending on the applicable duty whatever you have paid a uh, importer takes away is cargo and no storage charges applicable it done so during the free period next is the import clearance procedures clearance for the home consumption mode of payment payment of duty please take it the screenshot of the particular slide import clearance procedures clearance for the home consumption payment of duty as assessed as per the tariff whatever the tax and duties you have paid cargo examination in line with the average documents customs out of the charge cargo custom clearance and ready for delivery to the importer mode of payment under online under registration registration custom nominated bank that or or other bank or that is called demand drop parcel as parcel as percentage at a random full 100% cargo examination sometime it can be the parcelly we can we can check it out at a random basis sometime fully 100% cargo examination advance examination means upon receipt of the exam report cargo classification cargo classification determined and duty calculation is made please take out take it out the screen sort of the particular slide the how the clearance for the home consumption payment of the duties as assessed as per the tariff cargo examination in line with the appraised documents custom out of the charge cargo custom clearance as ready for the delivery to the importers mode of the payment it can be the online it can be the dd that is called demand draft examination it can be parcelly or it can be fully parcelly if we are doing the parcel examination so we can randomly pick up certain goods and services and we can examine sometime it can be fully 100% cargo must, uh, might be examination advance examination is upon uh, upon this receipt of the exam report cargo classification determined and duty calculation is made now we have export clearance procedure categories of export goods categories of export freely exportable items negative list of export restricted or license export as the name suggests the items under this category free are to be imported exported and don't require any license so we have numerous number of goods and services where the no license are required and easily you can do export of those goods and services so that is called freely exportable items as the name suggests the items under this category are freely to are free to export and don't require any license negative as the name suggests items under this category are not permitted to be exported at all that is the prohibited so uh, if suppose that as per the foreign trade policy ftp they have they have been, they have been put it down certain goods and services on the negative list of the export then you will not be able to export those goods and services at any cost the restricted on license export as per the foreign trade policy they have been put it down certain goods and services where the license and restricted license are required for exporting so item under this categories are restricted and required license for exportation without license you cannot be able to export those goods and services the list of item under ever category published in the foreign trade policy i have been already told you export clearance procedures procedures facility of export factory stuffing of containers dock or cfs stuffing and air cargo stuffing 
the exporter has permission for stopping the container that is called F FCL at its factory premises under the supervision from central excise official. Permission is given by the central excise and custom that is called factory stopping of container. The exporter has permission for stopping the container at his factory premises under the supervision from central excise official. Permission is given by the central excise and custom department. Then only you will be able to fill it. Dock and CFS stuffing is all about. The exporter doesn't have permission for stuffing container at its factory premises. LCL cargo also fall under this category. So LCL and FCL both the cargo uh, fall under this categories. And exporter doesn't have permission for stuffing container. Got it? Then air cargo carting. The export cargo is carried at the airport nominated warehouse of the airline. The airport, the export cargo is carted at the airport nominated warehouse of the airlines. Depending on the whatever the airlines, they have certain nominated warehouses at airport. Accordingly, you have to be send your export cargo. So export can be done under any of the promotional schemes applicable using the requisite application and declaration for export. Again, take it the screenshot. Got it. So export can be done under any of the any one of the promotional schemes applicable using the requisite exa application and declaration for export. For the documentary requirement, exporter or CHA has to submit the following documents to the custom department for securing the custom clearance: shipping bill, appropriate type in a quad duplicate if clearance is manual. Commercial invoice that is called four copy, that is called two copy. Exchange control or guaranteed remittance or SGF, statutory declaration form as applicable in duplicate. Copy of letter of credit, copy of export order, export contract du duly attested by bank. Clear. Packing list, certificate of origin or GSP. The life service of preference, the life system of preference, certificate of origin, SIP declaration for from export of goods, application of removal excise duty approved by the central excise office, ARE has replaced the AR4. Original copy of certificate of insurance wherever necessary, marine insurance policy, export license where the required. So these are the documents we have to be submit for the custom clearance. First is Indian Custom Electronic Data Interchange System, that is called ICS. The computerized processing of shipping bills under this Indian Custom EDI Electronic Data Interchange System has come into the force with effect from 15th of September 2004. The system, this system is known as ICES, Indian Custom Electronic Data Interchange. So we have some computerized system for computerized processing of shipping bill under the Indian Custom. EDI that is the electronic data interchange. What actually we do in electronic data interchange, we can put it down the data, we can store the data and easily we can fetch it out data wherever we are required. Custom clearance procedures in respect of shipment by C when processing each document is computerized is add under. Restriction for registration for business identification number. Exporter have to obtain that. This is all things have been told in a lecture number two or three when I have been told you the procedures for the export house. Restrictions for business identification number. Exporter have to obtain the PAN, best business identification number. PAN is permanent account number. PAN based business identification number when from the Director General of Foreign Trade, that is called TGFT, prior to filing for custom clearance of export goods. Under the EDI system, PAN based win is received from the DGFT online. Under the EDI system, Pen waste when is received from the DZFT online. So exporters have to obtain the pen based business identification number from the Directorate General of Foreign Trade prior to filing for custom clearance of export goods under the EDI system, pen-based bin is received from the DGFT online. 
you can apply for the dg you can apply for the uh, win uh, through the dgfp office there is online procedures and easily you can get it then electronic filing of shipping bill electronically filing of shipping bill exporter cha are required to register their import export codes custom house license required license numbers and the bank account number for credit of drawback amount in the custom computer system before an edi shipping bill is filed the cha is stand for the custom house agent license number is required and the bank account number for credit of drawbacks amount in the custom computer system before an edi shipping bill is filed exporter cha would be required to submit the following document at the data entry center of the custom station what what the exporter cha would would have to do they have to be required to submit the following document at the data entry data entry center of the custom entry what are the documents declaration in the specific format that is called applicable in nexer a or b sgf sgf or gr guaranteed remittance or the statutory declaration form whichever whichever is applicable quota or inspection certificate from the export inspection agency drawbacks that is called dec dfrg dpv and declaration etc as applicable so these are the documents you are requiring to submit at the data entry center of the custom house for the clearance of the for the clearance of particular cargo clear so electronic filing of shipping bill i think you got it exporter cha are required to register their import export codes custom house license numbers and the bank account for it suppose that there is a for credit of drawback amount in the custom computer system before an edi system billing is edi shipping bill is filed so these are the document declaration of the specified format that is called applica applicable annexure a or b sd of statutory declaration form declaration quota inspection certificate duty drawbacks dwec dfrc dpb dec means dwec means please note down duty exemption entitlement certificate dfrc stand for duty free duty free replacement certificate then dpv duty entitlement passbook scheme duty entitlement passbook scheme so dwec stand for duty exemption entitlement certificate dfrg stand for duty free replacement certificate depb duty entitlement passbook speak scheme these are the documents which we are requiring for the at a duty entry center of the custom stations then is the shipping bill under the computerized system exporters is not required to the shipping bill required to file shipping bill it is rather generated through the computer system okay so under the computerized system exporters is not required to file shipping bill it is rather generated through the computer system then for i have been already told in the shipping bill but i am not going to i am not going to detail in detail this information is filed in the applicable two form an exer a and an exer b the full the, the, the all this information which we are going to be filed this will be in a two form that is called in a form 1 that is an exer a and an exer b if exporters if exports are duty duty free goods an exer a is filled in 
if exports are under claim of duty drawback, duty is paid fast and refunded after shipment, an exer B is to be filled. Okay. So when when the exer A will be filled is when if the exports are duty free goods. Okay. Then we will fill it the information your exer A. If suppose that if export are under claim of the duty drawbacks, so duty. So duty is paid first. Firstly, we have to be pay the duty. After that, there will be a refunded after the shipment. Then an exer B is to be filled in. The applicable an exer is submitted at the service center, data entry center at the customer second. So whatever the an exer, whatever the an exer is, we have whether it's a A or B, we have to be submitted at a service center or that is called data entry center of custom station. Once the data in feed up fed into the computer, a checklist is generated. Checklist is verified by the exporter CHA. If the data is in order, the sign-in token of the approval. After correct data is entered into the system, shipping bill is processed automatically by the system on the basis of the declaration made by the exporter. Then the service center generates the shipping bill of for nothing and further processing. Service center assign a number to the shipping bill, which is endorsed on the printed checklist and returned to the exporter. Got it? So what will happen once the data is fed into the computer? A checklist is generated. Clear? Checklist is verified by the exporter, CHA, custom house. And if the data is in order, then sign in token of the approval. Clear? After correct data is entered into the system, automatically shipping will be processed by the system on the basis of the declaration made by the exporter. Clear? Then the service center, service center or custom station generate the shipping bill for nothing and further processing. Service center assign a number to the shipping bill. Service center assign a number to the shipping bill, which is endorsed on the printed checklist and returned to the exporter. See, it's clear. Then, shipping bill just so generated is used as a basic document for issue of let export. Shipping bill so generated is used as a basic document for issue of let export. After that, order. Order later, the export CHA. As service center can check status of the shipping bill, then they should also check whether any query has been raised in respect of their shipping bill or not. We have to be checked that we, they have to be checked that whether any query has been raised in respect of their shipping bill or not. In case of any query, if there is any query, in case of any query, the, they should file a reply to the query through service center. It is important to note that shipping bill is only generated in the computer and no printout is taken at this stage. Endorsement are not made manually until let export order stage. But entered on the shipping bill in computer system, computer printout is taken only after the issuance of the let export order. Once the let export order will be issued or taken the printout, then only you can take it the printout of the shipping bill. Assistant Commissioner assists the following categories of shipping bill export. Shipping bill where the FOBs pre on board value is more than 10 lakh rupees. Shipping bill relating to the free trade samples whose value is more than 20,000. Drawback shipping bills where drawback amount is more than 1 lakh. So these are the categories where the shipping bill is required for the export. Again, you can take it out the screenshot of this particular slide. Shipping bill so generated is used as a basic document for issue of let order, let export order later. The exporter CHI service center can check status of the shipping bill. They should also check whether the any query has been raised in respect of the shipping bill or not. In case of any query, they should file a reply to the query through the service center. It is important to note that shipping bill is only generated in the computer and no printout is taken at this stage. Endorsement are not made manually until the let export order is stays, but entered in a shipping bill. In computer system, computer printout is taken only after the issuance of late export order. The assistant commissioner assesses the following categories of shipping bill. Shipping bill where the FOB's value is more than 10 lakh. Shipping bill relating to the free trade samples whose value is more than 20,000. Drawback shipping bills where drawback amount is more than 1 lakh. Clear? Now, checking of document as a custom house. Checking of document at custom house. Shipping bill involved foreign exchange are sent to the appraisement section. In appraisement section, detail and drawback shipping bills are allotted to the appraisers for, for scrutiny and examination order. 
free shipping bills are sent to the examiners examiners okay free shipping bills are sent to the examiners clear so what will happen shipping bill involved foreign exchange are sent to the appraisement section but in the appraisement section duty bill and drawback shipping bills are allotted to the appraisers for scrutiny and examination order free shipping bills are sent to the examiners so we verification of the shipping bill is made to the ascertain whether quantity and value of the goods as per export order or letter of credit input output norms and detail of the drawback rates are checked by the inspector and superintendent of the custom further verification is also made in respect of the compliance of the formalities as regard exchange control license in pre shipment okay so verification of the shipment will is made to the ascertain whether quantity and value of the goods are as per the export order or letter of credit or input output norms wherever applicable are details of the drawback rates are checked by the inspector and superintendent of the custom further verification is also made in respect of compliance of formalities as regard exchange control licensing pre shipment further checking of document at the custom house inspection if applicable and other statutory requirement the custom appraiser examine the assessee value of the goods the value of the good assessed by the appraisal is considered in all future transaction especially for settlement of incentive claims whenever you just want to be settlement of the incentive claim then custom appraiser examine the assessee value of the goods and the value of the goods assessed by the appraiser is considered in all future transactions okay and after the verification after the verification the custom appraiser examine examiner the examiner the feed exam uh, examination order on the shipping bill into the system the examination order determine the extent of the physical examination of goods at a dock and assign the official to conduct the examination this order enable the dock appraisal to conduct the physical examination of the goods in the dock the principal appraiser also counter sign the examination order the cha in turn can inquire about the status of the documents from his own system he can view any memo or objections in his document as they are posted in the system the shipping bill under is put on the gre gr that is called guaranteed remittance or sg of statutory declaration form sg of again i am writing the full form sg we stand for statutory declaration form GRE for GR for guaranteed remittance. So CHA in turn can inquire about the status of his document from his own system. He can view any memo or objection in his document as they are posted in the system. The shipping bill is number is put on the GR SD of form. SD of form is used in the place of GR form if the custom operations can computerize at this custom depot center. where export duty is to be paid where export duty is to be paid exporter's agent has to pay at a cash account section of the custom where export duty is to be paid exporter ha agent has to pay at cash and account section of the customs next physical examination of export cargo by dock appraiser physical examination of cargo export by the dock appraiser export goods goods are transported into the state after completing the port formalities once the port formalities will be completed then what will happen export goods are transported transported into the said okay as exporter agent present the following document to the dock appraiser along with the checklist whenever the exporter present the following document to the dock appraiser along the check checklist parking lists invoices that is called commercial invoices ear form application of removal excise
Agmar certificate that is called quality quality certification or ISI if applicable. The said appraisal examine, examine, uh, examiner conduct the physical examination good as per the examination report. The said appraiser or examiner conduct the physical examination of goods as per the examination order. If the examination is satisfactory, if the examination is satisfactory, the said appraiser or examiner record the report of physical examination on the shipping bill through the computer system. Okay. So if the examination is very satisfactory, the said appraiser or examiner record the report of physical examination on the shipping bill through the computer system. Now, physical examination of the export cargo by the dock appraiser. Physical examination of the export cargo by the dock appraiser. The appraiser also sign and stamp the original and duplicate copy of SDF, that is called statutory declaration form. He returns exporter copy and send copy of the SDF to the exporter or his agent. Then what the appraiser will do, appraiser also sign and stamp the original and duplicate copies of the SDF. He will sign on the original copy of the SDF and the duplicate copy of the SDF. He return export cop exporter copy and a second copy of SDF to the exporter or his agent. In case of any variations, in case of in case of any variations between the declaration in the shipping bill and the physical document examination report, the appraiser, appraiser may mark the electronic shipping bill to the assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner of custom export. He may also forward the physical document to the assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner of custom and instruct the exporters to his agent to meet out the assistant commissioner or deputy comm commissioner of custom for settlement of dispute. Okay. So if there is any if there is any variations if there is any variation between the declaration of the shipping bill declaration in the shipping bill and the physical document examination report then what they have to do appraiser may mark the electronic shipping bill to the assistant commissioner and deputy commissioner you have to be meet you have to be physically meet with the um, assistant commissioner and the deputy commissioner deputy commissioner for the any dispute if if it has been raised in the market because without the Permission of the assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner, you will not be able to send export the goods and services. So that is the thing. Ki he may forward the physical document to the assistant commissioner of custom and instruct the exporter or his agent to meet out the assistant commissioner for settlement of dispute. Then they will be they they are the only set, are the concerned authorities and they will be able to settle out the dispute. Clear. Further, documents are and entered and submitted are then this reviewed by different officers. Documents once entered and submitted are then reviewed by reviewed by different officers of the custom house at a various stage of processing. And final clearance is accorded, accorded on the computer system after all formalities are over for physical examination of goods at the sets. ICES keep tracks of officers. ICES keep tracks of officers who have handled the document at various stages of processing. The trial of processing cycle is available to superior officers at any time. So documents once entered and submitted are then reviewed by different officers of the custom authority. So whatever the documents are entered and submitted by the concern authority, it will be reviewed by the different officers of the customs house at a various stage of processing and final clearance is accorded on the computer system. And after all formalities are over for physical examination of goods at the sets. ICES keep track of the officers who have handled the documents at various stages of processing. The trial of processing cycles is available to superior officers at any time. In case exporters agrees with the view of department, in case exporters agrees with the view of department, the shipping bill is processed accordingly. Where, however, the exporter disputes the view of the department, principles of natural justice are required to be followed before finalization of the issues. Then draw of sample. Where the appraisal, dock, export, orders for sample to be drawn and tested, the custom officer may proceed to draw groups two samples from the consignment and enter the particulars thereof. There is no separate register for recording dates of sample drawn. There is, please note down this point, there is no separate register for recording date of sample drawn. Three copies of test memo are prepared and signed by the custom officers and appraising officers on the behalf of custom and the exporters or his agent. So what will happen where the appraisal doc orders for sample to be drawn and, and the tested, 
the custom officers may proceed for draw two samples from the consignment and enter the particular thereof. There is no separate register for recording duties of sample drawn. Three copy of test memo are prepared and signed by the custom officers and appraising officers on behalf of custom and the exporters of the center. Generation of the shipping bill. After examination of the goods and scrutiny of document, if everything is found to be in order, after examination of goods and scrutiny of documents, if everything is found to be order, appraiser feed let export order into system on the shipping bill. The shipping bill is generated by the system in two copies, one custom copy and one exporter copy. After examination of goods and scrutiny, after examination of goods and scrutiny of documents, if everything is found to be in order, and then what will happen? Appraiser feeds the let export order into system on the shipping bill. The shipping bill is generated by the system automatically in two copies, one copy is custom copy, other copy is exporter copy. After obtaining the printout of shipping bill, appraiser obtain the signature of representative of the CHA. Custom House Agency on a, both the copies of the shipping bill. It is necessary as the shipping bill has been computer generated and doesn't bind exporter. In the absence of signature, the name and license number of the CHA should be clearly mentioned below his signature. Whenever the, whenever the CHA representative will make it out the signature on the custom copy and the exporter copy, the name and the license number of the custom CHA should be clearly mentioned. Appraiser thereafter is sign and stamp both the copies of the shipping bill at the specified player. Then what will appraiser do? Appraiser thereafter sign and stamp both the copies of the shipping bill at the specified place. In case of any discrepancy, suppose that in case of any discrepancy, the matter is reported to the assistant collector of custom for the further instruction or decision. If suppose that any mishappenings or any discrepancy happens, then what will happen? This matter will be reported to the assistant collector or assistant commissioner of customs for the further instructions or decision. They will settle out the dispute if suppose that any raises. Exporters get export promotion copy and export copy of shipping bill duly signed by the competent authority of the CHA and the appraiser. Exposure get the export promotion copy and exporter copy of shipping bill duly signed by the competent authority. Custom copy of shipping bill and original copy of SDF are forwarded by the appraiser to the export department of custom house. Original copy of SDF is sent to the RBA. Custom copy of shipping bill and original copy of SDF are forwarded by the appraiser to export department of custom house. Original copy of SDF is sent to the RBA. Clear? Custom copy of shipping bill and original copy of SDF statutory declaration form are forwarded by the appraiser to export department of custom house. Original copy of SDF is sent to the RBI that is for central bank in terms of India that is for RBI. Then loading of goods under supervision of preventive office. Exporter submit his copy of shipping bill to the preventive officer of the customs. Exporter submit his copy of shipping bill to the preventive officer of the customs. Secondly, preventive officer Preventive officer makes an endorsement, let's ship order to the exporter's copy of shipping bill. Preventive officer makes an endorsement, let's ship order and exporter's copy of shipping bill. The above endorsement is an authorization from custom to the shipping company to accept the cargo on the basis for loading. The above endorsement is an authorization from custom to the shipping company to accept the cargo on the basis for loading. Then what, then what will happen? Goods will be loaded under the supervision of preventive officer. Whomsoever the, whomsoever the preventive officer, goods will be loaded under the supervision of the preventive officer. If suppose that without the supervision of the preventive officers, if you are loading the goods, that will be that will be that that might be called the void. Preventive officer supervise the loading of container, general cargo into the vessels and give shipped on board endorsement of the exporter copy of shipping bill. Mate receipt. Shipping company hand over made receipt to the port. Shipping company hand over made receipt to the port. An exporter collect the made receipt after paying due to due, due to the port authorities. Whether it's a seaport or rail or rail port or the airport. Then post loading certificate. Exporter present made receipt to the preventive officer. Preventive officer earlier recorded a certificate of shipment on exporter copy of shipping bill. Now you record the fact of shipment on order copy of shipping bill in, on copies of TRD that is for approval application of removal excise ban and return them to the exporter. 
then collection of bill of bill of lading exporter chh submit the merit receipt to the shipping company and request to issue the bill of lading negotiable and non negotiable then then further we have to be uh, we have to be fulfill the compliances of the post uh, port procedures then export cargo can be brought into the port export cargo can be brought into the port after the ship has been allotted as a berth and declared for loading shippers have to pay the port charges and dependent on the procedures following by the each port some port collect the port charges before loading while bombay port offer the facility of collecting port charges after loading then carden we have to take the carting permission before bringing cargo to the shipment said it is necessary to take carting permission from superintendent of the said as agent of the shipping company then vehicle ticket at the port gate while entering with the cargo shipper has to show carting permission and vehicle ticket in duplicate to the gate inspector without the vehicle ticket you cannot be entered in a uh, said so then gate inspector examine the goods and the document to ensure permitted goods and documents only are entering into the port otherwise you will not be able to enter the, those goods and services into the port then the packages bundles cases mentioned in the vehicle tickets are tell are tallied with the those in the vehicle before goods are allowed in necessary entries made in the registers in respect of cargo passes through the gate thank you thank you so much